The Lick. You've heard it in many songs, many settings. How you put this together is it's built on three parts. You have the top part, the middle part, and the resolution at the bottom. You're going from this, I'm going to demonstrate in C, uh, this chord, just a C chord in root position, comes down to C chord in the first inversion. Connected in the middle with some kind of run down. You can do lots of different things. I'll show you a few ways. So first up, version number one here, one of six, is just a straightforward. So it starts out with <clears throat> what I call lick number one. I've got a video on how to play uh, lick number one from my book, How to Play Boogie Woogie Piano. That's the lick. So in order to put it into this, the lick, we just go up lick number one. I'm switching fingers here. Two and four, three and five. And notice how when I play two and four, index finger is sliding off the flat third to the natural third. And it's important you do this with one finger. That's the way it's always been done. That's the way the old guys did it. And that gets you the best sound. It also frees up your other fingers to do other things, which we'll see later on. So you've got four on G. At the same time, push down E flat and slide it up. Now we're gonna come down. This is another thing, you're gonna slide. Three fingers, but four notes. You got E flat, D with the third finger, C, G. Now your thumb on G is one of the common things with all these six ways to play the lick. The thumb on G allows you to pivot to your resolution down here. And so I use, I come over with the third finger, second finger, thumb. And there you have it, that's all there is to it. Notice that in all six of these versions, that re resolving note to the major third, remember we're in C, that resolving third happens on beat one of the second bar of the lick. One, one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, and one. So the timing is very important. That is very important, where it ends up. Okay, version number two. Very similar to the first one, starting with this lick number one position. But we're coming down the lick. So you slide up here to the fifth. At the same time, you play the C with the fifth finger. Now you're going to come down to this, see immediately, my hand gets in this position for, it's like a C triad, with the fifth on the bottom. Boom, right there. Now I'm going to hold the G as I come E flat, slide down. So this part is the same as the first one, but this time I'm holding a G. Now I cross over. So instead of just the third finger on F, like in the first one, we got pinky, and I've got second finger and fourth finger, second finger and fourth finger again. But my second finger went from E flat to E. Now this is not a slide. It's two separate notes. I'm using the same finger. Okay, one, this one starts right on one. One and two and three, four and one. Okay, version number three has, uh, it's kind of a Professor Long Hair shape to it and sound. Uh, 
Uh, and so this kind of hinges on you keeping the C position, C chord, but I've got the fifth doubled in the thumb. Play the octave. So this is, remember, keep in mind your C chord. That's all it is. Now I'm stepping up both octaves. Now I'm holding that G, doing this little run that we did in the last two versions. Same exact notes. I'm holding that G as I come down. Now, cross over, the thumb is the pivot point. Cross over second finger, pinky, thumb, and pinky, thumb. And now I outline this C6 chord. So it'll be. I'm kind of holding the C a little bit. You don't have to. You can let it go. Okay. Now here, one note about this, instead of just sliding off the third finger, E flat to E, I'm actually elongating the slide by doing second finger on D and coming up. So I'm making it like a two note grace note. Second finger on D, third finger covers E flat to E. See how nice that is? Two, three, four, and one. Okay, number four. It's very much a combination of the last three. So we're here, we're coming, uh, only thing is we're starting with this little uh, these pickup notes. Now we do this like we did before. Now we do this down to the octave G, like we just did. Hold the G. Now single notes, like we did in the first one. Third finger, second finger, thumb. So. Oops. So that's one thing, I just made the mistake of crossing over. You can interchange the top parts, the middle parts, and the bottom parts of any one of these six. So it's not wrong to go. I could combine four and three, just like that. Um, so feel free to, to do whatever parts you find easiest Take the first part that you find easiest. Take the second part you find easiest. Take the resolution that you find that you like the best. Put them all together into your version. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's encouraged in this style. Make your own way. All right, number five. This is one of my favorite ones because I love this middle part. This little, it's a trill. Take any three notes, do middle, top, middle, bottom. Uh, you can do that on any lick, really. Like that's my lick number two from the other uh, series. You can do it anything. So I like this little, I don't even know what to call it, little trill. Uh, So this lick starts out on the five here, uh, even though you're playing the C chord. Keep it. It's a C chord shape. You're doing the top two notes. Remember, one finger on E flat to E. Now you're right here in this position already. Cross over. Second finger, pinky. Thumb, pinky. Thumb and pinky. One and two, three, four and one. 
Remember, no matter where these things start, they always end up on one. One is the major third. And one. Okay, number six. This is uh, kind of a, another combination. You'll see the similarities. Uh, sorry. Wrong fingers. So number six. This one's kind of a combination of, of a couple other uh, other ones as well. So number six. This one is also kind of a combination of some of the other ones. So here you go. Two and four. Always one finger. When you got black note to white note, I usually use one finger. Now you get this octave. Hold the G. Come down just as before. Cross over. Three and five. Two and four. Two and four. Three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one.
Now to show all these licks in context, I created a little etude that you can practice. Um, just gonna point out a couple things. It basically uses the licks, but I'm gonna demonstrate a couple things slowly for you. This etude follows the chord changes of an eight bar form uh, that's used in the song Rockin' Pneumonia and the Boogie Boogie Flu. So basically it's C for four bars, G7 for two bars, then you do a break on C for two bars. That's it, there's just two chords. Um, um, now there's two versions of this. One of them is, uses this bass line. So this is kind of a James Booker type bass line. It's meant to embody this two-handed rhythm, but with one hand. So you go C, C and G, jump down thumb, rock on the G's, now together with A and G, B and G. So I also do that on G. One of the other things you're gonna see me do on this is uh, walking transitions between the chords. So what that is, is like from C to G, you don't jump down, you go. Uh, So it's basically, you walk up these notes, you do it in G, and then I'm going to walk to C. Okay, so the left hand, if that's too complicated, uh, you know, for wherever you're at right now, if you're a little more intermediate, try this Boogie Woogie bass line version. This is your left hand, it's gonna be straight eighth notes, not swung. You got C and G twice, E flat A, and then E. Okay, so those are the differences between the, the versions. One's got the James Booker left hand, one's got the boogie left hand. Now one of the things you're gonna notice uh, is that there's a turnaround. And this is a very New Orleans kind of Dr. John way to do a turnaround. You take a, a G, G octaves in both hands, but on the very top, you hold down the half step below, the major seventh. So that's F sharp and G together. But instead of holding it down and just mashing it all together, what you do is you come off right after you push it. So I'm going. That's what I'm doing here. That gives you that kind of, uh, kind of distortion almost. And then you're in. The only other thing I want to mention is that in measure, let's see, in the second round, in measure 10, 11, 12, you're gonna see me start this. Okay, so that that's actually version number five of the lick that we just learned. But uh, I wanna show you that you don't always have to do it exactly like I showed it to you. So here, I'm putting just that first part, I'm repeating it, then again. Now, but I still end on one, one, now jump back in. Now what I do here is I'm showing you that this is right before, this is leading to G. So you're on C.
now you're on G7. This is the seventh, seventh of G. Okay. So there, we didn't resolve to C. We resolved down to the seventh. Get a little tension there. Uh, now we're on G. Okay. Also, another thing that happens the first time this we encounter this is in bar eight. Um, it's we're still uh, we just finished up C, and this is we're starting the lick in G because it lead it's leading us into G. Okay, so this is this is the lick number three, version number three, but transposed into G. 